Hey there, welcome back to another unboxing video. More like unpackaging because I don't really have a box. But, uh, yeah, there's some items that I received from a couple friends of mine in the mail as belated birthday presents. And I also have a bunch of stuff that I got for myself for my birthday that I want to show you. So this is a unpackaging unboxing video as well as a birthday haul. Uh, so I, I hope you all enjoy this. I hope you've enjoyed the recent reviews and stuff like that. I have a hot, piping, brand new episode of Talking, well not Talking Cinema, uh, Cellular Nation, which is going to be posted sometime this weekend, so be on the lookout for that. But, but anyway, let's get started. These are two uh, Blu-rays I got from a good friend of mine named Mike, and he got me these off my wish list. So we have Reanimator, which is a total classic. Uh, Arrow does a great job with the transfers and with features and everything. I like this cover art. It's pretty cool. This isn't the limited edition, and I'm okay with that because the limited edition I felt was a little bit of a ripoff. So you get a slip cover, and you get a second disc, which is the integral cut of the film. So it has a few extra sequences, which are on here as a special feature. So why was it? Why why is it worth the money? I I mean, it seems this seems to be a trend lately with Synapse and with Arrow and with Scream in some ways with these limited edition sets that aren't really worth. The extra money. Creepshow 2, I would say, was worth it because you had... Not only did you have the cool limited edition slipcase, but you also had the comic book, which was an adaptation of the one of the segments that didn't get made that was, that was originally a part of the script for Creepshow 2, Pinfall. So that was cool. I mean that was an, that was something that made it worth it at least for me personally. The reanimator set, it doesn't seem like there's a lot that's worth it. It looks cool, it looks nice. I mean, yeah, it's higher quality than this and you get a booklet and you get all kinds of stuff, but in terms of extra features, you don't get anything other than a second disc with the integral cut and maybe a few other things. So, to me, it's kind of a rip-off. It's kind of Arrow taking advantage of collectors and knowing that, oh, you know, they're collectors. They'll collect it. You know, it's rare. There's limited editions, so they're, they'll buy it up. And then it's not really worth it. I, I, I mean, that's just me, personally. What I, I'm not, it's not one of those things where I'm like, oh, man, I missed out on it. I could care less because I really... I like the film a lot, and I'm fine with having this, because it still has the film remastered in 4K, it still has a ton of features on it, so it's not like I missed out on anything major, I just missed out on aesthetics and an integral cut that I could care less about. It's not like the Nightbreed limited edition set from Scream Factory, which has the theatrical cut of the film, as well as a, a third disc, which has more features on it that are exclusive to the set so but regardless really glad to have uh, this release of reanimator i know that over in the uk and i think in the us too they did a version they did a blu-ray of brighter reanimator and i actually ordered that along with a bunch of other blu-rays including hell comes to frog town deep red and uh, I think I was an, I also ordered another Argento film, Videodrome, and stuff like that. And I ordered them during Arrow Video's flash sale that they had in April. And this is the Arrow Video from the UK, not the US. And I still haven't gotten it yet in the mail. So I thought I was going to get it before my birthday, and that hasn't happened. Uh, we'll see if I get it on Saturday or not, uh, which would be tomorrow. Uh, by the by, the time this video is posted, and maybe after, I mean, at the most a week later. And regardless, though, 
I'm still going to get it either way because Arrow Video is really cool. And they're like, you know, if you don't get it within a week, let us know. And uh, we'll send you a whole other package with tracking and everything free of charge. So regardless, I'm going to get the items that I paid for. It's just one of those things where it's a minor inconvenience and it's the epitome of a first world problem. But it's one of those things where I'm, I'm a little bit bummed because I thought I was going to get brighter reanimator as well as uh, reanimator around the same time. But, you know, hey, it is what it is. Now, speaking of reanimator, I know that uh, Veteran Collector Series is going to do a release of Beyond Reanimator. And I'd like to get that sometime as well because then that would complete my reanimator collection on Blu-ray. And I'm glad that's getting a release too, because finally you can get all the films on Blu-ray and that's going to be, uh, definitely something to look forward to for fans of this series. Now, now we get into a, uh, series of movies that were sent to me by another good friend of mine named Jonathan. He sent me, basket case on blu-ray the arrow video release what's in the basket i am really psyched and glad to have this in my possession this this was on my wish list uh so was reanimator and the skin i live in and well actually yeah actually i didn't even get to that one <laughs> this is the other uh release other item that uh my uh, good friend mike sent me a film called the skin i live in and this is a film that I've been curious about because of the subject material and uh, heard good things about it. So, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to this one. It does something with the body horror genre that I haven't really seen. And I am a big fan of the body horror genre. So, yeah, really curious about the skin I live in. Going back to the items that Jonathan sent me, I'm just a bit overwhelmed by some stuff because it's just, I, I'm, I'm looking down at the list, the whole, just two bags of things that I got recently. So, and also I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm very humbled and speechless, uh, by all the generosity from, uh, the, these two friends of mine and, and as well as from anybody who's ever sent me anything in the past or will send me anything in the present and uh people who just leave nice words you know kind words on my channel i mean and just support me just the fact that people are willing to send me stuff is icing on the cake it's stuff that i i would never expect and i never have expected and i've been pleasantly surprised multiple times and it's just a very humbling thing to know that you're doing something that people like enough to reward you in a way and i think that's it, it like i said it's hard sometimes it's hard it's hard to put into words like how much that means you know how how much I'm, t I'm not even making any sense, you know, that, that's, that's, you know, it's that kind of feeling and it's humble, humbling is the perfect way to put it. But anyway, Jonathan has sent me stuff, multiple things in the past, and he sent me these items for my birthday. So we have basket case. What's in the basket? And I've got a cat that's freaking out. Hey. What's in the basket is apparently a cat. <laughs> I had this on my wish list for a while because I'm a big fan of Basket Case. It's a fun B-movie. And uh, I really enjoy Hen and Lauder's work. And this was really nice to see. And it's, it's really nice to see Arrow doing it. Because they're the perfect company to be doing a special edition of Basket Case. They did a special edition of Frankenhooker. So it's really cool that they did one for Basket Case as well. And this has 
a ton of features on it, a new transfer of the film, and it's the best film in the series. I, I don't really care for the second one that much. The third one I could watch, and I'm definitely going to keep the Steelbook Blu-ray trilogy set that I have for the sequels and stuff like that for the collection. And there's also a documentary that's all about uh, the entire series. But I'm really glad to have this because now I can just, if I want to watch Basket Case, I can just pop this in. And it's also a different transfer. It has some other features on it that are not on that release. One thing I don't really like about this, though, is for some reason, I don't know why Arrow is doing this. With the slip cover, I mean, it looks okay. It's fine. But you have this thing on the edge. What is this? Why are they cutting a, a, a square? So you... I, I don't understand this. This just is... just. I, I don't get it. What is the purpose of that? It, it, it really... Do, I mean, it doesn't make that big much of a difference. It's really not a super big deal. But when it comes to a slip cover, it just looks weird. Um, but that's just uh, it's a minor inconvenience. He also sent me Ben, which is which had not been on DVD or Blu-ray, so definitely curious to check this out sometime. I've never seen this, but I know that Michael Jackson sang a song for the soundtrack called Ben's Song. And it's a sequel to Willard, which he also sent me. So, um, I actually haven't seen the original Willard. I've seen the remake with Crispin Glover, and I didn't mind it. But I have not seen the original. And I haven't seen Ben either. So, this will be interesting to check these out sometime. He also sent me one of my favorite films from the 70s. And my favorite Burt Reynolds movie, Smokey and the Bandit. The 40th anniversary edition. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's such a classic, and I, and I wanted to get this release for the longest time because it has a feature length documentary on the making of the film called The Bandit, and I believe it also might have been a little bit remastered or not. I don't know for sure if it was remastered for this release, but. It's really the only Smokey the Bandit film worth owning on Blu-ray, if you ask me. The second film is is kind of a mess. There are some things about it that I like, but overall, it's a disappointment. And it doesn't really recapture the same magic as this film does. And the third film is a total piece of shit. It's roadkill. So, I'm totally fine with just having uh, this one on Blu-ray and the second one on DVD. And the third one... Not having that on DVD or in my collection. Unless somebody wants to send it to me. I'll take it, but... That movie sucks. He also sent me Steam Boy, the director's cut. I've heard about this one. I saw a trailer for it. Looked like it might be interesting. Uh, I know it's got uh, voices... Uh, you know, voiceover work from Anna Paquin, Alfred Molina, and Patrick Stewart. In the... Uh, English dub. This apparently does have the original Japanese dub and subtitles, uh, so you can watch the original Japanese version as well as watch the the American dub. And uh, it's from the it's from the director of Akira, which I really like. So, and I like steampunk stuff. So, yeah, this is the one I've been curious about. I just never really got around to seeing it. So. Definitely curious about giving this one a look whenever I get around to doing an anime month, which I will be doing sometime because Jonathan has sent me, he's graciously sent me a whole smorgasbord of anime. And this is another one, Metropolis. I had no idea there's another Metropolis. Like I, I, I was like, oh, there's another Metropolis. I thought there was just Fritz Lang's Metropolis. Or Giorgio Moroder's Metropolis. But no, there's there's another Metropolis. I like this... Uh, I like this DVD case. It's got some cool looking artwork. Uh, I like the colors on it. And... What's crazy about this particular set... Is disc one is normal, normal DVD. Disc two though is crazy. 
Disc 2 with all the features is a mini disc. It's a mini disc. I mean, I've never seen that before when it comes to a DVD release. It's a mini disc. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. I'm, I'm curious to see how this is going to work on my Blu-ray player, whether or not it will or not. I mean, I'm guessing it would, but you don't see mini discs anymore. Like mini discs maybe would have been considered maybe the, the, the format of the future, according to something like Johnny Mnemonic, but that never really came to be because you don't really see people using mini discs. But anyway, definitely give this a look for the anime month. And once again, got to thank, Jonathan, as well as Mike, for sending me all of these wonderful gifts in the mail. Now we're getting into some stuff that I picked up. And, and uh, Jonathan also sent me a letter, and I'll, I'll save that for last. He sent me a letter, which is really cool. Really appreciate that. But um, I want to save that for last because I, I still have plenty of energy and I got a lot of stuff to get through. So, um, there's a couple DVDs I got recently. The case is in fucked up condition, but this was really cheap. I got it used at Goodwill, and this is out of print, so it's a good deal. I'm not a super big fan of this one, but there are some, I can have some fun with this. Uh, and for the collection, I thought, why not? It's definitely an upgrade over the VHS. I know there's a release overseas that's in widescreen, uh, but it's also out of print if I remember correctly. And I know there was rumors of a remake that was going to come out with, uh, what the fuck is his name? He was like some big deal and then he fell off the face of the earth. Nobody cares about this guy anymore. And I can't even remember his name. Uh, okay, now I got it. Russell Brand. And thankfully that didn't happen because Russell Brand is absolutely horrible and uh yeah um it's it's trying to be kind of like beetlejuice but even more sophomoric and it's doesn't really have the same vibe or the same cleverness to it but i i gotta give rick mail a lot of credit for going gung-ho with the character and i like the idea of the imaginary friend thing and phoebe cates is good uh, i think this one also has Carrie Fisher in a bit role as well. So, yeah, that's Drop Dead Fred. And then I also got Thunderheart from the same uh, Goodwill with uh, Val Kilmer and uh, Sam Shepard and Graham Greene. It's a film I've heard about but never seen. And this is one of those Sony TriStar releases that actually does have this, the full screen and widescreen release. So it's not just full screen only. And now we get to just a whole bunch of randomness. We got a laser disc of a film I've been really curious about seeing for a long, long time. And it's a film called The November Conspiracy. And I, I picked this up on eBay. It's in just super great condition. Oh, and I also got a new laser disc player. So I got that at Goodwill recently too, which is really cool. And it also plays double sides, auto plays uh, both sides of the disc just like the one that I already have. And so it's really nice to have a double, uh, a spare. And um, I will definitely give this a look sometime. This is on a watch later pile for whenever I do some kind of uh, series of reviews where maybe it's kind of similar to something my friend did way back in the day called First Time Viewing or something like that. It, because it's they're, they're films that I've been wanting to see for a long time. And this is one of them because... It stars Paige Turco, who was April O'Neil in uh, Turtles 2 and 3. And uh, she really didn't get a, the chance to star in a lot of movies. So I've been really curious about checking it out because of that. So that's the laser disc of the November Conspiracy. Here we have some DVDs that I got from this just really awesome, amazing store. It's called the Variety Shop. It's in uh, Portland, Oregon. It's, uh, it's it's around there downtown. There's a whole back room, which is just a labyrinth of VHS. And it's also got a bunch of DVDs. And so I got 
some DVDs, as well as a whole ton of VHS, and uh, including titles that I'd been looking for for a long time. So it, this was a really cool, awesome uh, birthday, because uh, I actually found them on my birthday. So that was that was really cool. But anyway, we got Forbidden World. Um, a uh, Roger Corman cult classics release. I think it's also known as Mutant. It's another alternate title for it. And, um, excuse me. So yeah, Forbidden World. I apologize for that. I'm just like, blah, you know. I've been kind of getting over a little bit of some kind of bug or something that's been going around. But anyway... This one, I got it for pretty cheap. It was like 7 bucks. It's a pretty good deal for a Shout Factory release. It's got a good amount of features on it. Now, here's the thing. This only has the theatrical version on it. So, there's no director's cut. The original release is a two-disc special edition. And it has the director's cut, which is like a few minutes longer. But the director's cut is only in full frame. So, it's only in full screen. And the theatrical version is the one that's remastered. And it has all the features uh, on the first disc. So I'm fine with it. I don't really need the second disc. I, I could care less about the unrated cut, really. Um, maybe there would be some a a extra... Well, I mean, there was an audio commentary with the director on the director's cut. But regardless, I I'm fine with just the theatrical version. Uh, I got this for the collection and for the upcoming marathon of 80s horror films that I'm going to be watching for my book. So the version I would be watching would be the theatrical cut anyway. So regardless, if I just tried to pay for the disc by itself, it probably would cost more than seven bucks. But um, it's a good deal. Also got The Great Train Robbery, a film uh, by Michael Crichton starring... Sean Connery and Don Donald Sutherland got a TV movie called Winds of Terror, which looks interesting. It's uh, anytime you have something that says in the tradition of the sum of all fears an outbreak, I'm curious. Not necessarily sum of all fears, but outbreak for sure. And it's directed by Robert Mandel, who directed The Substitute and FX. And it's got Timothy Hutton and Vanessa Williams, and it deals with like some super virus that gets released on a cruise ship or something. So I'm curious about giving that a look. Got a PM Entertainment action film called The Sender with Michael Madsen and Arlie Ermey. It's got like 45 minutes of PM Entertainment trailers on it, which is a one really cool double, a really cool not necessarily double feature, but really cool special feature. I got season one of The Invisible Man. I love this show. I grew up watching this show on Sci-Fi Channel. Why the hell is season two not on DVD? Why do we only have season one? I mean, the, the, there's the first episode from season two is on this is in this set. Why don't we have any any of that? I mean, and the features are eh. You got a commentary, I think, on like one episode. And you got to sit down with the producer, but no interviews with the with the with Vincent Ventresca, and um, yeah, but it's pretty good quality in terms of uh, picture quality for this release, and I like the look of it, and I'm really glad to get get this for my collection. Paid a good price for it too; wasn't that expensive. That's another thing about this guy. The, the guy who runs this place, the variety shop, he does not price gouge you. He's just like, you know what, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be ridiculous and crazy with the prices. Uh, he's being realistic, and that's really cool. And you can get some great deals on stuff. Like, this was brand new and unopened. So, um, and I got it for like 12 bucks, which is a great deal. But, um, yeah, I I don't know who else remembers this show, but I definitely did. And I I was a big fan of this show, and I was bummed when it got canceled. And one of these days, I will definitely be doing a review of Season 1, as well as Season 2, because I did find a way to watch Season 2. But not in that great of quality, but it's still Season 2. 
Speaking of twos, I got the two Jakes. Uh, this is the sequel to Chinatown. What's funny is I have the sequel, but I don't have the first one yet. That's because this was in the bargain rack. I got it for a dollar, so... And it's the special collector's edition, which I had on my wish list. Got an anthology called Future Shock with Bill Paxton. And Brian James. And Martin Cove. Got a film called Beneath Lock Ness that apparently somebody just photocopied the cover and just print it off <laughs> but it's not a bootleg it actually is the dvd might not be that great but uh it was a dollar and I, I was curious about it because i i remember being really interested in the unknown and the unexplained and the Loch Ness monster and stuff like that and uh yeah so it was like a dollar so it wasn't like it was that expensive then I got The Ministry of Vengeance, which is a vigilante film. And you wouldn't know that with the cover art. It stars John Schneider from Dukes of Hazard, But he does not look like this in the movie. And this is one of those Platinum Entertainment hard plastic releases. So that's it for DVDs. Now we just have a ton of VHS. And I'm going to try to go through these as quickly as possible. Because I don't want this video to be an hour. So we have Outrage, which is a film that was on my wish list for the longest time. It, and I took it off because there was no copies available anymore on Amazon. And when I had the, this on my wish list, the price was too high. Found this for a dollar at the Variety Shop in the Labyrinth of VHS. And it really is a Labyrinth of VHS tapes. I mean, there's shelves everywhere you look and you can get lost in there. Like It is the craziest shit. Um, but anyway... Really glad to get this. This is a 1986 TV movie, and I, I saw a trailer for it in another Vidmark release, and it looked interesting. So, glad I picked this up. Another film I got that was on my wish list is a film called The Naked Man. It stars Michael Rappaport, and it's a wrestling movie. Michael Rappaport uh, wrestles as The Naked Man. Uh, and I like Michael Rappaport, chiropractor by day, wrestler by night. And it's just a kind of a kooky, crazy movie. Rachel Lee Cook's also in it. And it uh, has a script by one of the Coen brothers. So, yeah. So that's a naked man. Another one I got was Buy and Sell, which is another film that was on my wish list. This one has Roddy Piper in a bit role, as well as Randall Tex Cobb and Robert Carradine. So, kind of a forgotten about 80s comedy, but uh, one I've been curious about checking out because the cast and the concept was all right. A film called The Late Shift, which is about the late night wars between Jay Leno and uh, David Letterman. A movie called Rough Magic that I never heard of, starring Bridget Fonda and Russell Crowe. And it takes place in the 20s, and you got... I, I love the aesthetic from the 20s. I think it's the 20s, because like, you have like the flapper sort of thing going here. Maybe it might be the 30s, but I love the aesthetic, and uh, it just looks interesting. And I, and I think I did see a trailer for this, and it looked interesting before. I just kind of forgot about it. But yeah, it's kind of a... Yeah, it's like a magic drama, comedy kind of... It's, it's a throwback film. We got Warbirds, which I might have this already, um, and I don't know for sure, but what I I love, I love you have, it separates the men from the boys, but not only that, you have the back, which is uh, Uli Lamel's, like, this is the review for this movie, from Vincent Camby. This is a film in which Lamel takes filmmaking with a complete seriousness. Is that a good or a bad thing? Oh, he, he takes filmmaking with complete seriousness, so this isn't that bad. <laughs> shouldn't shouldn't the director take filmmaking with complete seriousness with every film that he's doing? I mean, it's just it's, that's extremely faint praise. Film called The Break, which you can't really see the title because of the Hollywood video sticker. This is a tennis drama. Which, I like sports films, and there aren't very many tennis sports films, so pick that up for the collection. A film I've never heard of called Forgotten City, 
with Fred Ward and Robert Patrick. And it's like a action adventure movie. We got Black Magic Woman with Mark Hamill and Amanda Wiss, as well as Apollonia. It's an erotic thriller with Mark Hamill. We have Red Sun Rising with Don the Dragon Wilson. A film called Clear Cut with Graham Greene. And it's uh, kind of like an Indian, not, not really Indian, a Native American deliverance movie. It's kind of a crazy concept. Uh, there's uh, this, yeah... Graham Greene plays a Native American who decides to torture, torture a bunch of people who are, like, fucking around with the woods and the environment. <laughs> and, I mean, like, just decides to take it out on a bunch of loggers. It's, yeah, it's something else. I'm, I'm curious about giving that a look sometime. Got a film called Fast Money with uh, Yancey Butler from Hard Target and the Witchblade TV series. And uh, Matt McCoy from The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. Not, yeah, Matt, Matt McCoy, not Matt McColm. Matt McColm is Nightman. And if you're a fan of Nightman, that's coming out on DVD. So if you're a fan of that series, be on the lookout for that. A film called Resurrection with Ellen Burstyn, which you might recognize from The Exorcist. She played uh, Reagan's mom. And this is an interesting movie. She plays a woman who has a car accident, has a um, near that a near death experience, and then it changes her life. And it's kind of an interesting concept. I, I mean, I like the idea of having a yeah. She ends up having the power to heal other people after she has a near death experience. So. So it's kind of an interesting idea, interesting concept. Not even close to being done. I still have plenty of tapes. I got a whole nother bag. So we have another Toy Soldiers. It's not the version of, or the film with Sean Astin. It's a different one from the 80s. We got Sting of the Black Scorpion. Feel her sting. And I know it looks like a porno. <laughs> But it isn't. It's it's a it's what this is. It, I think it's like a couple episodes of the Black Scorpion TV series that's compiled into a movie. Before this was a TV series, there were two movies starring Joan Severance, and then there was a TV series starring Michelle Lintel, who's who's pictured here, and it it, it lasted one season, and it was such a ripoff of Batman and even had similar villains but I remember watching this show on sci-fi channel growing up and I got I got I can have some fun with it so uh I I, I def I, you know it was like a dollar so I was like sure for the collection I'll feel her sting we got into the homeland which is a kind of, it's a crazy TV movie that deals with a bunch of right-wing uh, militia Nazis in the U.S. And one of them is played, the leader is played by Paul Lamott, who you might recognize from American Graffiti. And you got C. Thomas Howell and Powers Booth. And it's only a VHS. And I, some of the titles I got here are really rare. Like, they're not... You're not going to find them for a dollar online. So, and I got a good deal on a lot of them. I have a Tom Berenger thriller called Last Rites. Marciano, which is a, a film based on Rocky Marciano, the real life boxer, and it stars Tony Lo Bianco. It's a TV movie from the 70s. We got Blood Fist 3 Force to Fight. Don the Dragon Wilson. Believe it or not, there's like six or seven of those movies. It's crazy as shit. We got a boxing movie I've never heard of. And when I saw this, I was like, Liam Neeson in a boxing movie? And it like takes place in, in, in well, it looks like it takes place in modern day, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like a, uh, I don't think, I think it is a little bit of a throwback. 
But yeah, never heard of this movie. The Big Man, Crossing the Line, Liam Neeson in a fighting movie. I'm definitely curious about this one for sure. And um, we have The Immortals, which is a crazy movie. Because look at the cast. You got Eric Roberts, Tia Carrera, Tony Curtis. But you also have Joe Pontoliano, Clarence Williams III from Tales in the Hood, and Chris Rock, and William Forsyth. It's like, wow, like, Chris Rock? like <laughs> In a movie like this? Like, it's interesting. Got a Olivier Gruner film called The Fighter, which is also known as Savate with Mark Singer. Kind of a Western martial arts movie, which I've been curious about. And I believe it's only on VHS. I don't think it's on DVD. At least not in the U.S. Got a Gary Daniels film called Black Friday, which apparently takes place in the future. Nothing about this makes you believe that's going to be the case. And nothing about the back really says it takes place in the future. And I don't know, but it's for the Gary Daniels collection. And then I got this film, which I had to get because look at this. It's Patrick Stewart, Jean-Luc Picard himself, in a film called Dad Savage, A Tale of Untamed Revenge. And yes, it's a revenge film, a rated R revenge movie starring Patrick Stewart. And he's going to get some revenge, some deliverance style uh, justice. It's just like, what <laughs> the heck? Patrick Stewart? In, in a, a revenge movie? I almost said, pa what? Patrick Stewart in a rape revenge movie? No, that would, now that would be even crazier. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. So got even more tapes here. I'm going to try to go through them as fast as possible. Like I said, there's a lot. Wild Zone, a film with Edward Albert that, I, I think it has Edward Albert in it. No, it doesn't. It has a guy who looks like Edward Albert. No, it's a bunch of no but guys you don't know. I think it's an Australian film. And I've been curious about it. So, got it on VHS recently. I got a steal on this from a Facebook group. This is Grim Prairie, Prairie Tales. It's a out of print horror anthology. Uh, which is uh, one of the better ones. Uh, it deals with uh, a lot of different stories that take place in the Old West. It's written directed by Wayne Coe, who worked on, I think he worked on a bunch of other films and stuff like that. And William Afferton is also in it. And uh, yeah, I mean, long out of print, goes for crazy prices. I got it for super cheap. I got another film that also has, uh, I don't th yeah, I don't think Brad Dourif is in this, but Sharon Stone is in this one. It's called Cold Steel. And it's a stars Brad Davis, and it's a film that I saw the trailer for. It looked kind of interesting, and Adam Ant is also in this, the singer. This is Sharon Stone before she would uh, go on to do Basic Instinct. A film called Trojan War, which stars Will Friedel and Jennifer Love Hewitt in an early role. Got another Blood Fist film, Blood Fist 6, Ground Zero. I have the first two on VHS as well, so now I have the first three and then the sixth one, and I think there's a fourth and there's a fifth one too. There's a lot of crazy Blood Fist movies out there. We got Roswell, the UFO cover-up, with Kyle MacLachlan and Martin Sheen and Dwight Yoakam. PM Entertainment film called Force to Kill with Corey Michael Eubanks. Uh, got this for the PM Entertainment collection and also because Corey Michael Eubanks isn't in a ton of movies and I, I probably for good reason, but uh, and I remember seeing the trailer for this and it looked okay. So for a PM Entertainment movie. And I have a lot of, I have a decent amount of other films that star Corey Michael Eubanks. Film, another film was on my wish list for a while, Red Alert. This is a fairly forgotten about 70s film. It uh, stars William Devane, who you might recognize from a 70s film called The Dark. And what happens is there's uh, this 
a nuclear reactor in uh, somewhere in Minneapolis. It leaks and there's a, a really bad tragedy and travesty and just craziness that ensues and 14 workers die and the whole city might be wiped out and it's all there's all this sort of, sort of suspicion on what's why it happened and yeah and then uh, these two are trying to stop uh things from really going to hell in a handbasket and adrian barbeau is also in this as well so yeah this is a film that i've been really curious about so i'm glad to get this on on vhs got a Robert Townsend stand-up special because I, I really do like Robert Townsend and this one has uh, some exclusive skits that are in it. A film called Nasty Hero. There's another film on my wish list. I mean, look at that cover art. You got this wannabe Mark Singer with a metal glove and it's, it just it just looks it looks like it's worth a watch at least. It really does. Uh, whoever did the cover art for this really did a damn good job with it um even i i just love the way it looks uh, from the from uh i mean i really like for the most part these rca columbia releases their cover art the 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 spines and everything so this is this is another film to go on my watch later pile and maybe for a series of videos where i talk about where i review films that i've been wanting to see and here's another one that would go in that pile, Nails, with Dennis Hopper, which I've heard some decent things about, and Dennis Hopper is uh, in this as a lead, and it's directed by John Flynn, and from all the th good things I've heard about it, I don't know why it's not on DVD. We got Black Magic with uh, Rachel Ward and Judd Reinhold. I think I saw this a long time ago. Because I, I think I have this in storage in Michigan somewhere. But um, I don't remember much about it. Um, so I got it for the collection. Got a film called The Rain Killer. Which has a pretty ambitious tagline. Not since Psycho have showers been so terrifying. Uh, nobody is going to compare this movie to Psycho. Barely nobody fucking remembers this movie. Uh, apparently it's got Michael Chiklis in it. And stars Ray Sharkey, the idol maker, uh, the rain killer. And we're almost done with stuff to show you guys. And then I'll do read the, <clears throat> read the letter and then call it a day. And then I'll have to spend a few more minutes just putting all this stuff away. Another first world problem. A low budget action film called Crossfire, which is probably a total pile of shit, but I was curious about it because you got Andrew Devoff, the Wishmaster himself, and he's playing a good guy. I'm, I'm really curious to see how that's going to work out. Shoot Fighter 2, Kill or Be Killed, with uh, Bolo Young. And William Zabka. Yes, William Zabka from The Karate Kid. A vigilante film starring Robert Urich called Revolver. And he plays a guy who got stuck in a wheelchair and decides to take out some vigilante justice on uh, the, the guys who crippled him. And yeah, looks, you know, I'm curious about it. A, a guy, wheelchair bound vigilante movie. <laughs> I got this film just because it would be fun for a laugh. Ring of the Musketeers, starring David Hasselhoff and Cheech Marin, and Corbin Burnson as the va as the villain, and Allison Duty is also in this, as well as John Reese Davies. And this is a modern day, well, modern day in terms of the '90s, Three Musketeers film. It's like what, what in the heck, what in the hell is this? You know, this is the craziest shit. I mean, Cheech Marin. Uh, David Hasselhoff, Allison Duty, like what? <laughs> Speed of crazy, Gary Busey in Canvas with John Reese Davies. Never heard of this one. I'm curious about it because Gary Busey, you know, is there going to be any crazy Gary Busey moments in this? We'll see. Uh, American Cyborg, Steel Warrior. 
it's a decent film. It's not nothing spectacular, but it's all right. Showdown with uh, Billy Blanks is another kind of wannabe Karate Kid type movie, but it's rated R. Honestly, I feel that Karate Kid Part 3 should have been R or should have been at least PG-13. I think it was, but it should have been like an adult Daniel going into some fighting tournament. And I think that would have been better than what they eventually did make. And then the last VHS is a film called Da Vinci's War, which has Michael Nori and Joey Travolta and Vanity. But I've been curious about this one because Michael Nori. I like Michael Nori. I loved him in The Hidden. And here he's the lead in an action movie. So we'll see how that turns out. And then we have the letter from Jonathan. Dear Mike, Hope you enjoy these gifts, even Basket Case. I hope it's an upgrade to your old DVD and looks sounds better than ever with this new 4K restoration. Looks so good, you'd be hard to convince it was done in 1982. I didn't have the DVD, so uh, it would probably be an upgrade over the Blu-ray uh, that I have from overseas. Isn't it wonderful now that Scream Shout Factory is doing a Warner Brothers Sony deal besides Universal ITC MGM deal. I mean, with the upcoming It's Alive of Unknown Origin in the Mouth of Madness. Yeah, that's really cool. They're, they're doing In the Mouth of Madness. Uh, Memoirs of an Invisible Man, When a Stranger is Watching, Brain Scan, Piranha 2, T uh, Tinger? I, I, Tingler? Is that what he's trying to say? The Tingler? Uh, Straight Jacket plus Night of the Lepus, A Bright Future is Ahead. Just imagine if Scream Shout did End of Days Collector's Edition, Critters 1 and 2 Collector's Editions, with 2K Restorations and Extra of Galore, even extended TV cut of Critters 2, Alligator Collector's Edition, Beetlejuice Collector's Edition, Deadly Friend Collector's Edition, Bolt Blah Blah. I'm just going to kind of skim over some of this. Uh, no offense, Jonathan. Uh, but yeah, all these Collector's Editions you're listening here, that would be awesome. But we'll see. We shall see. Um... Creep show, I think creep show might happen because I heard something through some guy who's kind of close to some people at Scream Factory who were like, wait, just wait, there might be a creep show release, you know, kind of, it's, he was insinuating in a Facebook group that there, there's a potential for a creep show collector's edition from Shaw Factory. Um, Fright Night 1 and 2 would be cool too, but I don't think that's probably going to happen. If we were going to see Fright Night 2, it would probably be through Restaurant, uh, or, I don't know, we'll see. Equalizer 2 and Jurassic World 2 should be improvements of the first movies. I hope so. Equalizer 2, I was kind of surprised by the t the trailer, I thought it looked alright. Jurassic World 2, the teaser kind of sucked, but the recent trailers have really sold me on the film. And VHS 2 is an example of a movie that had a first one disappointed you, yet you thought 2 was better. Those two could be it. Yeah, you're right. Other than the first segment, which was shitty, the, the second two, the other two segments were good. So, yeah, I, I was surprised by VHS 2. Nice review of Spawn the Animated Series. Loved that series since it was 15 and when it first aired. Did you know that Madhouse in Animation did seasons 2 and 3? Yeah, I did. I did know that they did that. Um, the show is uh, like The Crow meets Batman, the animated series, Hellraiser and CSI with great animation, storytelling and mixing horror with fantasy and Lovecraftian way. Did you know Kyle Gostro and Spawn were Charles and Copper from The Thing? Yeah, I did, which is also really cool. Uh, I agree with Steel on your review. It sucks balls, and I paid to see that shit in theaters when I was 15. Hey, I, I had my dad pay pay to uh, take me to see Kazam, so you know, and and Mortal Kombat Annihilation. So I feel your pain. He was, uh, so yeah, I paid to see that shit in theaters when I was fifteen. Being a big fan of the character, as it should have been Ving Rhames or Wesley Snipes. To read my previous letter, um, yeah, I actually did. I, I just I haven't gotten the chance to uh, do a video about it, but um, it was it was nice. Appreciate it. Um, hope you enjoy Metropolis. It's an excellent movie written by the creator of Vakura and one of the best anime movies ever. On Tales from the Crypt season two, what do you think of Corman's Calamity? I love that episode. It's a really great episode and features some really inventive. Uh, practical makeup effects and it's a cool concept of 
and there's some really nice meta bits in it. It's one of my favorite episodes from season two, and uh, has a great performance by Harry Dean Anderson, who uh, passed away, uh, which is too bad, and may he rest in peace. Yeah, it does remind me of Cellar Dweller, and it's a much better version of Cellar Dweller. Um, yeah, the wife monster was similar to, to uh, a monster from House, but not the exact same. What do you think of season three split second? I like that one too. It's got Brian James in it. And I think that's the one where he's like a lumberjack. Uh, well, I think, no, he's, yeah, he's a lumberjack and, uh, Billy, what the hell is his name? He was in, I think he was in a bit role in the lost boys and he was in season one of American gladiators and he was in a few other movies. I know his first of Billy worth. So, He's in it. I think he plays the main lead guy uh, with the foxy woman, the guy who played Leon from Blade Runner. Yeah, Brian Jones. Yeah, I've seen that one. It's great. It's got a. It's it's not one of my. I don't know if I'd say it's great, but it's a good one. It's got a great finale with Brian James getting chainsawed in half, uh, and he deserved it because he was a total asshole. Morning Mess. Totally seen that one. Huge fan of that one. I think it's Steven Weber who's the lead in that, and um. I believe that's the one. I believe that's the one where he goes in and he tries to get this uh, information about this secret. That, I mean, I don't really want to give it away to people who haven't seen it, um, but I could be wrong. But no, I think that is the one for sure, and I like that one a lot. The Changeling's coming to Blu-ray this year. Can't wait. Yeah, um, I can't wait for that either. Uh, Second Sight is doing the UK release. Severin is doing the US release, but there hasn't been a lot of info on that, so we'll see what happens um, with that. Next month, I'm going to send you more stuff like it's alive, un- of unknown origins, killer of unknown origin, killer clowns, some anime, and more surprises. Wow, man, I, I, that's that's really that's that's really kind. I really appreciate it. Can't wait to see your Death Wish reviews plus some more 1980 horror films. Request stuff, maybe before my birthday on June 16th. You could review Golgo the 13th Professional and Graver Fireflies. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely think about that. Maybe I could do Anime Month then. Ballbusters Review is the funniest review I've heard from you besides kind of Chucky. It's his words, not mine. Okay. Uh, uh, or, uh, or Cursed of Chucky and Robocock. Robocop makes it, Mo- Robocock makes it sound like a porn parody of Robocop. I agree on your celebration that horror classic characters need to be put to rest, even Leatherface and Chucky, as I can't believe Mancini is planning for a Child's Play TV show with stupid-ass ideas like Chucky in World War II. Oh, God, no. Should, he should can the idea, and he needs to go badly. I agree. Chucky in World War II? Like, that's dumb. What is this? The the aborted sequel to Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Um, The Zone Troopers with Chucky? You should just leave this dead horse of a franchise alone. I agree. Did you hear about a Critters TV series in the works? Could be interesting, uh, but we'll see. I know the Tremors TV series was in the works with Kevin Bacon returning, and that got canned. Uh, should be interesting using practical effects. Um, well, that's cool. I would hope that they would use practical effects. I think it part two next year should improve over part one, uh, since you like the adult half of the story more than part one. Yeah, we'll see. I I would like to see a different director, or if you have the same guy, like, maybe hire different screenwriters. Um, I hope they find more, uh, good, uh, find good adult actors, excuse me, for the role, use more practical effects than the part one did. The part one did. Maybe under Silver Nation or more underrated sequels, even your top movies of any year in the 80s and 90s. Sincerely, John. Yeah, I'll definitely, uh... I'm definitely up for doing another installment of underrated sequels with Cellular Nation. So, yeah, uh, on that front, once again, I'm going to say thank you to Jonathan for sending this letter along with uh, those other wonderful gifts. And I don't know really what else to say except uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for hopefully enjoying this long video. It's longer than I thought it was going to be because, honestly, there's a lot of stuff to show you. And... Uh, it's one of those things where I guess it was as long as it was going to be. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching. And it wasn't an hour. It was close. But it still wasn't an hour. But anyway, thank you for watching. And as always, I will see you later. See ya.